Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. My name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney at um, Myrick O'Connell. There are 56 of us now. We've grown. Um, I am the one that does elder law. And elder law is really about helping people figure out uh, how to live the rest of their lives without going broke, and then if they have anything left, how to get it to whoever they want it to get to without leakages. No estate taxes, no probate, all of those things. So it's a, that whole cluster of issues, but a piece of it really is, and, and actually a big piece of it is talking about this. Uh, there's nothing that my clients worry about more than Alzheimer's. My clients who are Frank and Mary, you've already met Frank and Mary and their children Peter, Paul and Mary Jr. And Frank and Mary have a very simple goal. They uh, want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. When one of them dies, they like to leave everything to the other, if there's anything left. And when the two of them have died, they like to leave everything to their children. And, and the question is, how do they do that? And the thing that they worry the most about, and this is the situation we're going to talk about today. What if Mary starts getting more forgetful than usual? and is seeming, to, you're, con you're repeating a lot, and she just seems, the question is, is something going on with Mary? Is she just getting old? That's what we would always assume, until fairly recently. Alzheimer's, the term Alzheimer's really wasn't talked about very much. And the first thing that you wanna do, if you or your loved one, your spouse, um, is, is showing things that you are concerned about and you're worried about whether or not these may be symptoms uh, of Alzheimer's or of another disease that causes dementia, call them. Call the Alzheimer's Association. This is, this is a national organization, but it has state chapters, and it has, among other things, that 24-hour hotline. You can call day or night. If you're, if, if you're awake in the middle of the night because you're just stressed out over this because you're saying, is something happening to me? What's going wrong? Or if there really is an emergency because your spouse is about to start beating on you and you're like, why is this happening? First of all, get away from your spouse, but then call. And what the Alzheimer's Association, and, and by the way, I'm, we're big supporters of the Alzheimer's Association. We encourage people to donate to the Alzheimer's Association. Um, they are focused on this issue, and it's a big issue. There are over 5 million Americans right now that they feel have Alzheimer's. Uh, that number is going to go um, way up over the next several years. Uh, something like 15.5 million families right now are helping people with Alzheimer's donating basically time that if it were fa paid for by the government would cost billions and billions of dollars and all of those numbers uh, are just going up. So people are concerned about this. The Alzheimer's Association can, among other things, help you find whether there are folks around from whom you can get a diagnosis of what's going on. Um, there are a lot of normal age-related changes. We all start forgetting a little, you know, a few things. I found myself getting off the boat today and got all the way to Young's Bicycle Shop before I remembered that I had left my suitcase in which I carried all of this stuff at the boat place, right? So I mean, and I worry about myself that way, you know? So I think we worry about those things, but the question is, are, are, you, are there other things happening? Are you having a lot of trouble doing more things, uh, doing m multiple things at once? Are you constantly forgetting words that you would always remember before. Are there some, are there some things that are really going on? Uh, in that case, maybe you want to get a diagnosis. Maybe you want to find out what is going on. First though, and I know we've talked about this a little bit here before, constantly people will tell me they've got dementia. They're worried that they've got dementia. Dementia is not a disease. Dementia is a set of symptoms. Um, typically, they're thought of as these symptoms. There's memory loss, there's, there's problems with language, there's confusion, there's poor decreased judgment. There are changes in mood and behavior and changes in personality. Now, I have to tell you from my experience in watching this play out, I used to think that all of these were, were symptoms of Alzheimer's. Um, I am persuaded now that it's really the ones higher up on the list. That the cognitive issues, the forgetfulness, 
and, and as the forgetfulness gets, gets greater and greater, the failure to be able to follow sets of instructions and do a lot of those things, that those are really inevitable symptoms of dementia. But that the other stuff, the anger and the aggression and the apathy and these tremendous emotional things that you go through, are really, they are people's responses to the to the, to the fact that they're losing their memory and these other things and they're just getting really frustrated or embarrassed or a whole bunch of things. Or their responses to the way that other people are dealing with them. People constantly telling them, how come you can't remember that anymore? I just told you that five times, you know. So a lot of what the Alzheimer's Association is now working with people on is really trying to train the trainers basically, trying to help people who are dealing with dementia regularly um, to understand the ways to help those folks continue to live meaningful and purposeful lives, just lives in which they don't have such great memories. So I think that's really important. So um, you also want to kind of know that there are a set of things that cause dementia that are all reversible. Uh, brain tumors, normal pressure, hydrocephalus, infection, depression. Depression causes a lot of dementia. I've had clients who've been in the hospital who've been given various medications uh, or they've had a urine, gotten a urinary tract infection and start, and start showing dementia symptoms and all of a sudden they're getting a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. Whereas as soon as, the, once they get out of the hospital, all of this stuff reverses. So one of the reasons why you want to get a diagnosis is you want to be able to see whether there are, there are things causing your dementia, if you're Mary right now and you're Frank, things causing your dementia that are reversible. If it's not, then you want to know kind of what is causing it. And because while Alzheimer's is the cause of about 70% of all of the cases of people who are getting advanced stages of dementia, um, there are several other possibilities. Parkinson's disease is one. Vascular dementia, these like little mini strokes that cause you to kind of start slowing down. This Lewy body dementia, you want to know about this one because Lewy body, and if, if, that is, if, if, if it is Lewy body disease that is causing the dementia, then you are experiencing more hallucinations. Um, if you are treated with certain kinds of drugs because uh, you, they think you have Parkinson's, um, they can really hurt you if you have Lewy body. So you want to get the right diagnosis. And, and by the way, that's the reason why if, if you're dealing with somebody with early stage Alzheimer's, you want to be talking to somebody who is a professional. You also, even if you're talking to your general practitioner, you may be wanting to ask him, so who do I talk to who just does this kind of stuff? Now you once again, you want to get those diagnoses because if it is true that you have dementia coming from Alzheimer's or from one of these other irreversible causes, then you may want be wanting to do some planning for it. And that's some of the things that we're going to talk about today. So once again, we, you know, you've got this information, contact the Alzheimer's Association or go on their website if you have any questions regarding any of these issues. Then call um, Sherry Hunt. She is Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands. We've talked about um, Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands before. Uh, Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands is the ASAP, the Aging Services Access Point, which covers this region. This region is Cape Cod uh, and the Islands, Barnstable County and Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. They are the source or the funnel through which all federal and state money flows into this area um, to help people who are elders, including Mary. Uh, you will find, if you talk to um, Sherry, that even for Mary who has early stage Alzheimer's, so she does not have such a severe condition that she, is, that she would be qualified for kind of major programs like the Frail Elder Waiver through Mass Health and other things, even in these early stages, Frank and Mary may very well be qualified to have services delivered at home between 6 and 12 hours of services at home per week. Um, those services are going to get delivered if you're Frank and Mary and you have total assets of $800,000, if you own your home that's worth $400,000 and Frank has an IRA and they have savings of $200,000, they have substantial assets and Frank has substantial income. He's got a social security check of $1,500 a month, he's getting a pension of $750 a month, Mary's getting half of his social security check so she's getting $750, so they've got income of $3,000 a month. They can qualify for these programs through Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands. Elder Services also has respite programs. They have uh, caregiver programs, support groups. There are a lot of things that, can be, that, that Frank and Mary can take advantage of. 
Now, as Sherry will also tell you, because this is the island, there are some things that in many parts of the state you could take advantage of that you can't here because some of these programs are not available. And I think that's really one of the goals of kind of policy development in, in Nantucket. When I, I talked to recently to our island home about kind of how, policy, how, how this really needs to evolve, how we really need this kind of seamless set of programs on Nantucket for folks because there are a lot of, because otherwise you can't get to them, right? But that's, I think, once again, one of the reasons why um, the Alzheimer's Association is so important. Because through them and by phone, you can get a lot of the information that otherwise wouldn't be available to you. There is a wonderful woman named Carol DiRienzo that I was hoping to have speak to you today, but she couldn't do it. So I want to bring her back. Because one of the things that I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about is if you're Frank and Mary, and your goal is to die and be buried in the backyard, and, and so you really want to stay home, I'll always tell people, home is a great place to be, uh, and, you, and the best place to be, because as your dementia progresses, the last thing you're gonna, that you're gonna forget is where the bathroom is in your own house, and where the salt and pepper shakers are. So it's really a really great place to be, but your house has to be safe. One of the things, actually this, this woman and her, her husband is a, a contractor and they basically will come into your home and they'll go through your home and just talk to you about what you could do to make it safe. They charge you a fixed fee of like several hundred dollars. But then if you've got repairs to make, then they'll do them or you can have somebody else do them. But one of the things that she's really made me appreciate is when, when you think about making your house adaptable, what you think about, at least what I would always think about is, oh, you mean put in a ramp? Right? And that's, you know, put in a ramp. I get that. But really, it's about looking room by room in your house and doing these things. Trying to simplify the house, label things, make it secure, and then modify the house if necessary. Carol always uses this example because the, one of those slides is her daughter's room. I said to her, does your daughter have dementia? Well, no, her daughter just is a 17-year-old daughter, so it's kind of a mess. But one of the things that she really emphasizes is the goal, if you have someone with dementia living in the home, is to simplify the home, to get rid of the clutter, to make sure that people aren't going to fall down, to actually cover mirrors as a person is progressing with dementia. They're going to be looking in the mirror and not knowing who that person is. So as things go along, you may want to do that. But in the short run, remove scatter rugs, throw rugs, portable space heaters, fans, because folks with dementia may be touching those things, kind of not knowing that they're there removing poisonous plants from the house because these folks may find themselves wanting to eat some of those things, right? So there are, there are, there are a whole bunch, removing fish tanks, um, removing artificial food or magnets from the house just because they may end up getting used inappropriately.